All right, thanks for tuning in. This is part three on strobes, common problems with strobes and solutions. One of the problems we have to recall with a strobe is limited penetration underwater. They probably only penetrate two to three to four feet at the most. So you have to be close to your subject, all right? The rate that the light drops out is proportional to the square of the distance. Another problem, over or under exposure. And I'm gonna show some examples of this because it's such a common problem. But one thing that's really important is to check the histogram. We will talk a little bit more about this, but let me show you what the histogram is. You look at your LCD and you show the shot and it shows this little graph. This is a graphic representation of the tones of color from dark to light. And it lets you see what kind of exposure you had. Let me show you some examples. Okay, here's a couple examples. This is an example of the strobe being too far from the subject. Too bad. Yeah, I was about five, six feet away. The strobe didn't reach it. The, the subject, the batfish, was washed out. All right, I get a li little closer. I take my time, cautious approach. Now I'm in within a couple feet of the batfish, and voila, beautiful color and contrast. Really nice picture. Um, here's an example of overexposure. And this is one of the main problems I've had where the strobe is either too strong or not strong enough. What we need to do is look at our histogram. Again, this is a graphic representation of the tones of light. Here, if I look at my histogram, these are all dark toward the left. There's underexposed. There's very few pixels here in the lighter region. And this is how this particular picture came out. Too dark, all right? Here's another one. This picture, the light pixels are blown, are, are, there's way too many light pixels. I've blown out detail in the lighting here. Let's see how this picture uh, turned out. Way too light, washed out. Whereas here is a nice bell shape. I, uh, I don't have too many blown out in the dark or the light side, and I have most of my pixels in the, in the uh, middle range. And this exposure of this head of the turtle came out pretty good. It's so important to look at the histogram and not your LCD. The reason is you can easily be fooled. I was just on a dive trip to the Keys and I brought a few samples to show me. I actually took a picture of the histogram on my camera. If I just looked at this, this was a bright sunny day, I would say, wow, that looks fine. But I look at the histogram and way over here, the details are blown out. So even though on the camera histogram on a bright day, it looks pretty good, the actual picture looked like that, washed out, details blown out, too bright. The histogram told me that though, so I could readjust. Another example, uh, on a darker day, the, hist the LCD screen might be kind of light and it might look like a decent picture. But by looking at the histogram, a lot of the pixels are all toward the dark area. This picture is way too dark, it's underexposed. I need to turn my strobe power up or make it closer to the subject. So here you go. And here's how the picture um, looked on my histogram uh, in low lighting. It looked okay, but when I actually, this is just a picture of the LCD. The actual picture looked like that. It's washed out, it's too dark. The histogram told me that. So that's so important to check not only your LCD underwater when you're taking the pictures, but look at the histogram, because that'll let you know if you have decent, decent exposure. Very important. Doesn't say anything about clarity, unfortunately. That's a separate issue. All right, let's look at a few other problems with stroke. This is called the light trap. And that's so annoying to have areas of the picture that just ruin the rest of the picture. Now, if you're a Photoshop whiz, which I'm not, and I don't have the time or energy or interest to spend hundreds of hours adjusting all my pictures in Photoshop, uh, you could probably take care of that. But basically, it's more important to understand strobe positioning, the cone of light, compose your subject, get to the right angle where you don't have these light traps or distracting backgrounds. Here's another example of a light trap, all the bright sand in the foreground when I'm photographing this lobster at night. Uh, whereas here we have a non-distracting background, no light traps, much more pleasing uh, uh, picture. Another problem we can have with strobes is a harsh shadow. The, uh, you know, you can set the strobe to one side and this octopus at night created a harsh shadow, unnatural lighting. So we sometimes will point our strobes a little bit away from the subject and catch it with the edge of the cone where the light is softer, not so direct. Another thing we could do is add a second strobe to soften or minimize or eliminate the harsh shadows. Finally, we can add a diffuser to also soften the light and widen the area of coverage. Um, as you see here, with using edge lighting with a softer area of the cone, we have a much more evenly lit 
picture of this little shrimp. All right, another thing, be in mind where your strobe is. Okay, sometimes I'll be taking pictures of something under a ledge and I, I'm getting my camera down in there forgetting that the uh, strobe is up here and it's not illuminating the eel. Okay, the, the strobe's up here, it's not gonna illuminate the eel. So you have to be mindful of where the subject is, where your camera is, and where the strobe is. This was a big uh, green moray eel under a ledge and a wreck and my first few shots I thought I was getting good images I took check the histogram everything was dark I was eliminating the top part of the ledge I put both strobes at an acute angle and shot, got it in and I was able to get a good picture of that eel in a pretty narrow place my main problems with strobes after all is said and done is still backscatter now there's ways to solve that we can adjust the cone of light so that the edge of the cone, if this is the, the, the strobe here, the subject here, we point the cone this way so the cone of light catches the subject but doesn't illuminate the water column in between. That's one popular way to do it. Another way, if there's too much backscatter, instead of having a open water background which is going to be blue or black and it's really going to show backscatter well, well find a background that isn't really distracting, it might even be pretty, but it minimizes, it kind of hides the backscatter. So here there was tremendous backscatter. If I shot down and got the, this, uh, this feather duster worm with an um, open water background, it would have been in a snowstorm. But I used this, this colorful coral in the background and it kind of hides the backscatter. Another way of doing this is to do a real close crop where you get so close you eliminate the background because the whole face in this case is the entire picture. So if you look carefully there is some backscatter here but uh, you don't notice it much because there's no water in the background. Another way to eliminate backscatter is set the strobes at an acute angle. This was done more in the past, not done as much anymore. Doesn't work that well, and it's kind of awkward to have the strobes so far apart, plus you get the harsh shadows. In addition to backscatter, another problem I've had with strobes is flooding. Believe it or not, I've flooded three of these Ike Light strobes over the years. Not good. Two of the times, the O-ring fell out in the hotel room under the bed and I put the strobe together missing an O-ring and the strobe flooded and ruined it. The third time I flooded a strobe I wasn't even sure what I did wrong but that's another issue. And the last thing I still despite all my prepara preparation sometimes have issues where the strobe won't fire or would it, where I get a gross over or under exposure despite my intentions. So still there's always some frustrations but the use of strobes in underwater photography just are one wonderful in the way it restores the beauty, the color, the clarity, and the contrast to the underwater world. So hopefully the pointers on these tutorials will be helpful. The next one we're going to talk about some strobe tips while shooting macro. Thanks for tuning in.